I'm at a gypsy. For people sitting at home watching Supercross and like on the couch and like being a fan or whatever, to just have like no idea that you're that guy. Like I never really thought of it. Like I never thought maybe Austin's just like that Ken Roxon, fast twitch. Like the dude can just slay for like 15 minutes. And then after that, you're like, you're starting to, yeah. to fade. Well, that's, you know? I mean, that's what I've, and I've you had can't to... train, you cannot train that away. No. Like that's who you are. Yeah. And like, and like, that's what, uh, like, it's almost like I can't train that like out either. Like yeah, if yeah. I, if I start to try to work hard enough to be as strong as those slow twitch guys at the end of the moto, then that's whenever I start to potentially get like burnout because I'm training too hard. That's like whenever I just start to, there's a really fine line of when I can get to as strong as those guys at the end, or I just, I almost just, if those guys are strong at the end, then that's what you just have to be stronger at the beginning. So it's just like, that's just just like, it's, it's, but it is like, it's, it's almost, it's weird because it seems like there's more, uh, I don't know. We were talking about that. I was talking about this with, with Levi um, mm. the other day. And it seems Great guy. like, yeah, Great guy. Awesome. he stayed at, he stayed at our house before Paula just so oh, we didn't have sick. to drive from Mitch's to, all the way down to Paula. So he's up in Corona. So um, he stayed there and we were, we were just talking about it. Um, uh, just the same thing. Like, like a, like there's certain guys that like, uh, they look like an athlete can, yeah. you know, I would like to think that I look kind of like an athlete when I take my shirt off. But then like, like, I mean, dude, some of the guys have dad bods, but they're strong. They're so strong and they're so fit. And like that, like, dude, I mean, I mean, you got to think like Ricky, he never really looked like a crazy, crazy athlete, but he was one of the fittest guys on a dirt bike. He, it just had a motor he just he just but that's what that's what it's almost like it's almost like to be that guy at outdoors um outdoors more specific but you have to it's almost like you have to have like a thicker body type Mm. it's almost like like you have to because you have to have that like fat reserve yeah i was gonna say there's almost like a certain energy reserve type of what you would have felt on your run yeah you know, like a, a, you know, with the whole marathon prep, you know, it's like Anna's probably going to burn three and a half thousand calories. So it's like, how the fuck do you eat three and a half thousand calories you, you, while I mean, you're running? And yeah. it'd be the same thing for you guys. Like two thirties, the amount of fluid that you're going to lose and the amount of calories that you're going to burn, like what you have to do to break even in terms of like your caloric intake and then yeah. your hydration, that's gnarly it's it's just to break even it's really not even possible like with the amount like that's what that's what is that is the toughest part for me in outdoors is is just just hydration and eating getting getting things into my body because you come off and you're you're looking at times you're watching film you're doing this and then you're like oh shit i was supposed to have a smoothie i was supposed to have a peanut butter and banana sandwich i was supposed to have all these things and Dude, I'm not even hungry. I feel I like I just I feel off. like I just ate breakfast. Yeah, yeah. And I got I got 15 minutes before I gotta go back down to the line for next practice. And yeah. then like, and then after that, I'm supposed to eat pasta and a whole lunch meal. And then all also on top of all this, I need to be drinking as much water as I possibly can. And all it's just like you you can't you can't get that much into you. Like yeah. you can't, it's it's so hard to get. That's the hardest part for me about um Supercross is, is easier because you have more time too. Like, yeah. but um, outdoors is is just tough because everything's so quick. And then you, from the thirty, it takes you a solid twenty minutes just to even get your body temperature back down to yeah, a manageable yeah, yeah. level to where then you feel like eating, eating or whatever and, yep, again. Like, yep. uh, you got to get in an ice bath for like ten minutes after. We have like the big trash cans that we fill up with ice and water, and we get in those for like ten minutes and just to get your body temperature down to where you can feel like eating anything. Yeah. And it's still, even then, I really can't eat much between between yeah. the two motos. Which and is then like, you add in nerves, pressure, yeah. you know, like the All that mental stuff. shit that you're dealing there. with on yeah. top of it too. Yeah, so it's, uh, that's that's honestly one of the toughest parts about race day is just, is just getting the food in. It's easier for, for Supercross, especially 
just because practice, you don't have to be overly, you need to run up, you need to be strong for 50 seconds for mm. a lap time, whatever. That's fine. Um, but, and then there's only 20, for us, there's only 22 minutes basically of racing mm. in a Supercross night. Yeah. And you have an hour and a half between heat race and motos. Yeah, just press press so the button. Go. It's it's easy. Yeah. Like it's it's easy. You have a you can eat a, a good proper dinner after practice or or whatever, a good proper afternoon, late lunch, early dinner before before the night show starts. You can eat a good big pasta. I usually like pasta or chicken and rice or something. And then after that, after you do the heat race, have some snacks, have some some peanut butter and some other stuff in between, and then you're good to go for the for the the main so that yeah. that's easy but outdoors dude like from when you get there to it's just all so cramped and then once you start racing you're so fried after the first moto that like you're like dude how can i even go for a second moto yeah. like a lot of the a lot of the outdoors i show up to it you go to the line and you're just like like what am i even I, I don't even feel like I want to go to the first turn, much less do another 30. Like, I feel like I just came off for that one. I feel like I'm still hot from the first moto. <laughs> yeah, I haven't yeah. even cooled down. Yeah. I feel like I got no water in, which I did. I drank a bunch of bottles of water, but I still feel dehydrated. And yeah. that's it's just, it's, I it's just, so tough. I, I find it crazy as well, just like the level of concentration you guys have to have. Like, that's the one thing that whenever I started training to – do the world bets race like i was just doing 20 20 20 20 20 and there was just times where i would just be like not bored but not able to focus on what i was doing yeah and i'm like i was riding and i was like doing the moto and i'm and i'm like fucking 12 minutes bro like gee are you serious All the time. and it's just so time. hard to be locked in for that long for yeah. and to have that focus and that's where like I, on a I, track you've ridden a lot too probably yeah like that you know the, the same, line. it's the same, the same thing the same yeah. lines yeah. like the same everything and that, that that's what is a huge like that's tough because um and you guys are doing it for even longer it's 30 plus 30 plus two yeah you and, know so yeah. just to stay locked in that's where like i think meditation is like massive because you like you're kind of training yourself to stay in it and yeah. to stay present even though you're just sitting and you're doing essentially nothing like to focus on doing nothing yeah. for however long that you do it. Yeah. It's that's a real skill that you have to build up. And it's like, how present can you be yeah. just for 30 minutes to just corner, corner, jump, corner, yeah. like just nothing else. Like this is the only thing that yeah. exists. Yeah. That shit is fucking hard. It's hard. That's, that's, I mean, that's half the battle at least if you can, cause, cause some races go by really quick and you're like, dude, it's, it's white. I got. I, was that the two lap board? Yeah. Was that the two lap board? Other races, you're like looking for the two lap board, and they pull out the halfway point. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, wait, yeah. hold up. Did yeah. they? Was that the? Did I just see the halfway point? I thought I was about to get like the white flag in lap, and that was it's halfway. That's those are the races that suck. But that's just kind of like, I mean you enjoy the track or if you it's just different tracks different riders different whatever but when you can get in a flow like that where you're just not thinking mm. then things go by quicker it's way it, i mean it's way better i i haven't figured out a way to do that every single time but when i can do that i mean shit's easy basically like yeah. it's you, you don't you don't feel like you get tired you don't feel like you lose focus like when you can just lock in on those days like they're, they're, it's sick yeah. Sick. And I can't I can't do it. I, I don't think anybody can do it every single day. Like it's it's a hard thing to do, but when you have those days, those are nice days. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.